All right, students, here we go, chapter four. So we're gonna combine two lessons today because they're both on multiplying fractions. So the first lesson is multiply fractions by a whole number. And that follows the workbook, page 265 to 272. And the other is we're going to multiply fractions by fractions. And that follows the workbook. And remember, at any time, you pause the video if you need more time, uh, 273 to 280. Okay, so let's first talk about the steps for multiplying fractions. And we're gonna follow this, we're gonna actually do this over the, last, the next several days. And then when we get to dividing fractions, we actually change it into a multiplication problem. So this is an important thing to know. All right, steps for multiplying fractions. All right, step one. All right, you're gonna hear me say, it needs to be in A over B form. And all I mean by that is that it needs to be written as a fraction. It needs a numerator and it needs a denominator. And if it doesn't have a numerator and a denominator, you gotta change it. So numerator is the number that goes in the top of the fraction. Denominator is the number that goes in the bottom. Denominator down, right? So if I have a whole number, which you will today, like the number two, you need to make it a fraction. And to make two a fraction, all you do is you take the two and you put it over one. The one goes in the denominator because two divided by one is two. You're just changing two into its fraction form. So if I had the whole number, seven. To write it as a fraction, I would put seven over one. That's all you do, okay? Then, the other important thing for you is to know how to change it if you have a mixed number. Now, we did that in the lesson before. I'll do that tomorrow, okay? But today, we're going to work with whole numbers and fractions only, okay? So, if it's a whole number, you got to put the whole number over one, okay? So, step one. Step two, I want you to open your minds and I want you to look to cross reduce. All right? We did that in the, um, I'm going to do that today, but we also did that in the last lesson. Right? So basically, when we're cross reducing, you're reducing crosswise. So for instance, if I had um, 2 over 3 times, I don't know, let's say, um, 4 over 1, or 1 over 4, all right? So what I'm asking you is to look this way and look this way to see if you can reduce. So if you look here, both of these you can divide by 2. So that would change this to a 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then you would use those new numbers. So look to cross-reduce. And the other thing I want you to be aware of is if you have the same numbers diagonally, meaning this way or this way, crosswise. If you have the same numbers crosswise, these all reduce to ones. So both of these would become ones because you can divide it by itself. And same thing here. I could divide this by three and divide this by three, and these become ones. So this whole thing, if I'm multiplying it out, it's going to become ones. So if they are the same numbers diagonally, so if you have the same numbers diagonally, they're going to become ones. They become equal to one. Okay, neat little trick, right? All right, step three. You're going to multiply the numerators I like to circle them. You're going to multiply the denominators. You can only multiply two numbers at a time. So if you have three numbers, you do two and then you do the next one. Denominators. 
And then your last step would be to reduce or simplify your fraction. And again, we did that in the lesson before, right? We reviewed that. And remember, you can't leave an improper fraction. An improper fraction, you need to change to a mixed number by dividing. Right, you divide. Let's write that by dividing. All right, at any time you pause the video if you need to. All right, I'm gonna start with an example on the bottom and we're gonna just continue, okay? All right, so example one. And again, pause if you need to. All right, I wanna do two times. Now, a dot in math means to multiply, two fifths. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put two over one. You have to make sure that this is a fraction. When I say A over B form, you need to make it a fraction. So you're gonna have two over one times two over five. And then you look to cross reduce. I can't reduce either of these numbers. So that means I multiply the numerator and I multiply the denominators. I like to circle them. Two times two is four. One times five is five. That can't be simplified. That's your answer for this. Okay, that was an easy example. I'm gonna get harder. All right, I'm going on the back. All right, example two. So what if I said to you, I want you to take one third of nine. All right, first of all, of in math is a very important word. It means to multiply. Okay, so I'm gonna do one third, and the word of means times, right? And now I have nine. I have to put the nine over one, right? You gotta make it a fraction. If you have to, write that. Make into a fraction. Okay, now this is where you look to cross reduce. Okay, some of you are just gonna multiply across this way and this way and get nine over three. Nine divided by three is three. Some of you are gonna do that. However, I'm telling you, look here because this becomes harder when you get more difficult problems. So look, is there any number that goes both into three and nine? Well, hopefully you're saying, yeah, three. So if I divide this by three, nine divided by three becomes a three, three divided by three becomes a one, and you're gonna use those new numbers. So one times three is three, one times one is one, three over one is three. It helps to cross reduce. If you don't cross reduce, you would have had this and you would have had to divide. Okay, let's try another one. All right, I wanna talk more about cross reducing. So I'm gonna give you um, some additional examples and I'm purposely making them the way that I am to help you. I know some of you struggle with this cross reducing. So if I had two fourths, if you guys were to reduce this, what you guys would do is you would divide by two like this and you would say it's one half, right? Well, when we're cross reducing, it's the same. The only difference is that you're doing it crosswise, all right? So if I had, I don't know, let's say, um, two over nine times nine over four. All right, so remember, two over four, we were able to divide this by two. So look, two and four. Long as you have a numerator and a denominator, crosswise, you can reduce them. So I'm gonna divide this by two, and I'm gonna divide this by two. So when I do that, use a different color, it'll help you. That becomes a one, this becomes a two, because four divided by two is two. And the other trick I said to you is if, let's write it, if you have the same numbers diagonally, if you have the same numbers diagonally, they reduce to ones. 
because you can divide it by itself. So if you can remember that, that's going to help you. Let's put a big star there. Okay, circle that. This is important because look, I have two nines here. Well, I could divide this by nine, get a one. Divide this by nine, I get one. So now look what happens to this problem. Now I'm only going to use my red numbers. One times one is one. One times two is two. Did you know that two ninths times nine over four is one half? That's why it helps to cross reduce. If you didn't do that, you would have had 18 over 36 and then had to reduce that. A little harder, isn't it? Here, let me try another one. Um, let's try 25 over 99 times 99 over 50. Yikes, you wanna be multiplying these numbers? No. All right, so look, first thing, if you have the same numbers diagonally, what do they turn to? Ones. All right, now look, 25 and 50. Well, can't I divide both of these by 25? If I divide this one by 25, I see chunks of 25. When I see 25, I think quarters. I know you guys make fun of me every time I say quarters, but think money. Well, I can divide by 25, so this becomes a one. This becomes a 50 divided by 25. How many 25s go into 50? Two. So now look, instead of doing 25 times 99 and 99 times 50, I now only have to do one times one and one times two. Isn't that easier? I think it is. All right, let's try this one. Um, five sevenths times one over five. Pause the video, go ahead, try it. All right, hopefully you saw this diagonally. Diagonally, they're the same, so change them to ones. So now I'm gonna multiply. One times one is one. Seven times one is seven. Your answer is seven. One over seven. Here, I'm gonna put the problem over here. Now look, you would have had five over 35 and then you would have had to reduce it. This is easier. All right, let's try some other examples. All right, other examples. And I'm gonna pause the video. I want you to pause the video and try them. So I want you to try one third times one fourth on your own. And I also want you to try one third times three fourths. I'm gonna make them easy, okay? Pause the video, go ahead and try it. All right, so with these examples, you can't cross reduce anything, so you just multiply across. One times one is one, three times four is 12. Done, can't reduce it. Okay, let's try this one. All right, is there anything you could cross reduce? Yes, the threes. They become ones. If you have the same numbers diagonally, change them to ones, right? I'm telling you, it really will save you time in terms of reducing. So now I have one times one is one, one times four is four, I get one fourth. All right, let's try another example, but this time what I'm gonna do is it's gonna have a mixed number and I wanna make sure that you can do problems that are like that. Okay, so I have to go to the next page to try that problem. All right, so let's try this. So continued. All right, so let's do five halves times, um, let's do seven over four. So go ahead, pause the video and try it. All right, so if you look at this problem, you can't cross reduce. So you're forced into multiplying across. So five times seven is 35, two times four is eight. This is improper. This is an improper fraction. You can't leave it. So you have to divide it out. So you have to do 35 divided by eight. Remember, top divided by bottom. Think of this as a divide sign. So the 35 goes in the house, it's the first number. The eight goes on the outside, it's a divisor. Eight can't go into three, but it goes into 35 exactly four times. Four times three is 32. And when you subtract, you get three. Now, remember I said you no more remainders, right? So what you do is you take this three, that remainder becomes the fraction, the numerator, the fraction, the numerator of the fraction of the mixed number, and the outside number is the denominator. So our answer is four and three eighths. So make sure that you can do that.